So it's really about the equalizer frequency options here in virtual DJ. So if I search for equalizer, or at least the first part of it, you can see we have these three equalizer, low frequency, mid frequency, and high frequency settings. And they represent the middle frequency for the knobs that are actually handling the frequency or the equalizer here. And uh, that's what will normally uh, be used if you use this with hardware. So you've always been able to set these to like mimic a mixer that you like or whatever, just change it uh, to what your ear likes. But uh, now they have been enhanced so that they're more gradual. That means that you don't necessarily have to set them in here. You can actually map this to a knob or a slider, like for instance, next to the, uh, to the actual EQ knobs so that you can, uh, you can do that on the fly. Um, and these are then the default ones and these are the ones that will then be changed. So being able to adjust this on the fly is actually not a new idea. It's very common on regular mixes and also on older Rain and Ellen and Heath uh, TJ mixes. Uh, you can find this uh, kind of feature. Now I don't own such mixes, so I've instead uh, used this old Nano Control 2 um, to map these new features or these improved enhanced features uh, so that I can test them out. So this is a, a Nano Control 2, and that's almost exclusively used for, uh, for effects, but today it's going to be used for IQing and adjusting frequencies on the IQs. So I mapped these first three as high and mid and bass. So just regular old IQ like you would know. So that means that if I uh, go up here, you can see when I turn these, that's just the IQ. Nothing fancy here. But then the sliders next to them, or below them, they're mapped to these new frequency adjustments or improved frequency adjustments. That means that this now changes the frequency that this is based upon. And the same goes for this one for the mid and this one for the bass. So that's how I've mapped it. So let's look at the actual mapping script. So the mapping of the three knobs is actually really simple because that's just knob one, two, and three. That is mapped as EQ high, EQ mid, and EQ low. So that's not really surprising. But then there are the three sliders, and that's actually a little bit more interesting because they're a little bit more complex. So they look like this. But of course, I used the setting that I need to adjust. So this is setting equalizer high frequency. So this is the slider one, which I'm going to use for the high frequency, right? So uh, that I put in here, but then there are a couple of param adjustments here uh, that I used. And what do they mean? Well, they have a couple of interesting numbers. So uh, what have I done here? Well, this kind of slider can go between one and 100%. Uh, to show that, I'll just try using it on the controller, and you can see that it goes here from one, which is 100%, and then down to zero. So that's my input. And I, of course, want to turn that into something that I can actually use to put into the setting. So what I've done here is I've multiplied this from zero to, to one by 3,000. So then I get a value between zero and 3,000. But the default value, of course, is 6,500 for the frequency, for high frequency. So I want to uh, go around that so I can go a bit below and a bit higher. Of course, you can adjust these numbers how you like. But I've used 3,000. So that means I probably want to go 1,500 below the 6,500 and 1,500 above. So uh, if I want to do that and I want to have 6,500 in the middle, then I should probably add 5,000. Because if I do that, then it'll go from 6,500, uh, uh, except for 1,500, half of 3,000, or and up to uh, 6,500 plus the, 1500, uh, the, um, the 1,500 here, half of the 3,000. So that's what we'll see. So that means that the high now 
can go between 5,000 and 8,000. So right around the 6,500, that is the default. So that's why I've chosen these numbers, and that's why they're both there. So I multiply the incoming uh, value to get something that's close to what I need, and then I add something uh, to bring it around the center that I want. And it's the same for the for the middle part here. The default for the middle part uh, was 1700. So I uh, I bring that uh, around uh, by multiplying it by a thousand and then adding 1200. That gives me on the middle part a value between 1200 uh, and the default again being 1700 and 2200 which is 500 above, so it's 500 uh, below and 500 above, right? And then, of course, at the end, there are the low ones here. So the base is a uh, default of 200. So again, I've uh, multiplied it by something and added something. So now I get between 50 hertz and 350 hertz on the frequency for my base EQ. So that's my map mapping. And of course, I'll put that in the, in the description of the video so you can try to play with this yourself. But that's how this kind of mapping works. So now these three sliders should work and um, adjust the frequency. So let me Take the first one, which is a high frequency, all the way down, like this, and then look into the software for the setting. Here. And see that the high frequency is down to 5000, the default being the 6500. Now, if I now change this down here by moving it all the way up and go back here, you can see that nothing happens because this is not really made to be uh, to be altered like that. So to actually see the change, I'll need to shut down the settings window, open it again, search for the equalizer part again, and then see now it's all the way up to 8,000. But this is of course not an easy test, so I've done a little extra mapping to be able to keep an eye on the changes. So how do I keep an eye on the frequency changes? Well, I've actually mapped that to some custom buttons. So if I click here, I get my custom buttons and you can see they're mapped as high, mid and low. And let's look at one of the scripts there so we can figure out how that is done. So let's just hit the low one. So as you can see, the app's been mapped to nothing because nothing is supposed to happen when I click the button. It's just supposed to, uh, to show the changes. So it's all happening down here in the bottom name. So let me make that a little bit bigger. And now we can look at it. So it actually says, get text and then a, a, t a text here. That's just low, that's just what it says. And it's put in this, this little thing so it actually, it actually validates it when running. So we actually get the text and not just this text. And then it validates the setting here for the equalizer low frequency. And we have all these things in the end to make everything add up. So the script is a little bit complex. And of course, it's not essential to use this stuff. It's just for monitoring it on the screen. But I'll still put it in the video description together with the one for high and mid so that you can look at it and use it if you like. But that now means that these three changes when I change down on the controller, so let me see that, and now change the, the high one, so that should be this one, it's all the way up, to all the way down, to around the center here, same here, mid, all the way down, all the way up, and back to around the center here, and the same for low, all the way down, all the way up, and back to around the center here, somewhere default. So that's how I keep an eye on these things changing 
while testing this stuff. So now we of course want to check if we can actually hear these changes happening. So uh, I've loaded a track and it's going to play through these monitors over here. And we can keep an eye on here and we can manipul manipulate it down here on the controller, right? Now I'll also map cue and play and pause. So we have something to start and stop the music with. So I'm going to play. I'm going to set this around center. And then that's the high EQ. Then I'm going to play and then I'm going to change the EQ a little bit, and then we'll manipulate the frequency and see if we can tell the difference. So all the way up, with the EQ, and then I'm gonna manipulate what it actually does. Back to center and all the way down with the EQ and manipulate the frequency. And the same with the mid one. So back to center here with the high one and the mid one all the way down. Let's go back to the beginning again. Track and then manipulate what the mid actually does by using the slider. So I can certainly tell that there's a difference on one that you could does based on these frequency settings. Same if we go back to center, all the way up. With the EQ all the way up now and then manipulate the setting, the frequency setting. Down to 1200 hertz, up to 2200 hertz, and back to center. And go back again to try to test the last one, the bass one. So I'm gonna put that all the way up, have the uh, the little one close to center here, and then try again. So the bass is all the way up on the EQ, and I'm manipulating the frequency. And you can clearly tell the difference, at least I can. And if I bring the EQ all the way down on the low end, and manipulate the frequency again. All the way to 50 hertz. Back to 50 hertz. That's even more easy to hear. So since I was done out in the air in front of the speaker with just an external cam, it might have been a little hard to tell what was happening, so I'm going to do a secondary test here. It's basically the same. I picked another track, see if that makes a difference. And then uh, I'm going to uh, do the exact same thing uh, using the uh, controller down here, so you can see the uh, the frequency is moving over here. I'm sitting around the center to begin with. And then, of course, the, the EQ is over here. So the places to, 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 uh, to watch, to monitor, is still the EQ, of course, but then course these over here as well so uh, uh, also I'm just gonna uh, do the ones where I remove some of the low mids and highs and then do these a little bit faster so it's easier to tell what's actually going on so let's see how that works out so the high EQ all the way up all, all the way down and then change it And the same with the mid. So let me just bring that back up. The mid all the way down. Let's do it again. And then the mid frequency. 
between 300 Hz and 2200 Hz. It makes it a little bit easier to tell what's going on. And finally, the lows. We also need to do those. And same thing again. I'm going to move these lowest frequencies with the EQ all the way down. You lay there on the kitchen floor. It seems like you can't take no more. I'm sorry, but when my hands and stars, I just can't get enough. So finally, I just want to show an, an alternative to the slider mappings that you might find more interesting. So this is the, 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 the mapping we've been using until now for the equalizer high frequency. But then on the, on the fourth, fifth, and sixth slider, I've, uh, I've done some alternatives here. So they're basically the same mapping, but I've just added program POW. That sounds fancy, but it's actually just the power off. So that's to make it uh, non-linear because most most sliders on hardware are non-linear. So that's what we kept trying to emulate. So the idea is that if I put this on, then the bottom of the slider uh, will move kind of very uh, move the values kind of slow, and the top of the slider will move them pretty fast. So that gets more like a uh, a, a regular uh, a regular slider on most hardware. So. If I go all the down, uh, all the way down on my uh, on my fourth slider on my uh, on my controller now, you can see I'm down to zero here, and then over here you can see it's at five thousand. Now I I start moving it slowly, slowly upwards, and you can see the values coming in here, and you can see the values changing slowly here. And then faster and faster until I get all the way to the top, which is when I hit one over here. So the last part was really fast, and the first part, so we should go the other way. Then the first part is really fast declining. And at the end, it'll be much slower declining. So now it, you can basically do it almost number by number down at the end. <laughs> 